Okay, so now we move on to part two of our trig functions, where we look at amplitude changes and vertical shifts. In terms of what values it is, it's the A value and the Q value. So if we look at our standard sine curve over here, y equals a sine x plus q, we want to look at what effect does this a have on the graph and what effect does this q have. So let's start off with the effect of a. So I've got a particular graph here, y equals a sine x. That is my standard graph, my standard sine curve, where the amplitude is going to be 1. And also, A is equal to 1, because if you look at the value of A, which is in front of the sine, it has a value of 1. And that's my standard curve, my standard, standard sine curve, which looks like that. Now, if we move on to number 2, let's make this the green one. Y equals 2 sine X. This one here we're going to draw and look at. Now, the first thing we notice is that my value of A, which is in front of sine, has a value of 2. So A is equal to 2. That would mean that my amplitude is also 2. So if I look at my graph now, what it does is it kind of stretches it up and down. And if you use your table again on your Casio, you go and you punch in 2 sine x, and you get to see what the graph looks like, it would be a graph that still starts at 0, but instead of only going up to 1, it goes up to 2. And then it cuts down at 180 again. And instead of stopping at 1, it goes all the way to minus 2 and up again. So that would be at 90 degrees. My height would reach 2. And at 270 degrees, it would go down to a minimum of minus 2. So that means that my amplitude is no longer just 1, but it's going to be 2. Because the deviation from my baseline is going to be up 2, down 2. So the amplitude would be 2. Now let's look at a third one and a fourth one. So now if we look at this one here, y equals 3 sine x. A takes on the value of 3. And let's see what this graph looks like. So you plug it into your Cassia and you're... Hang on, it still starts at 0, but it climbs up to 3. Goes down, cuts at 180, goes down to minus 3, and then up to 360. So what happens in this case here is that at 90 degrees, it doesn't only go to 1, it doesn't go to 2, but it goes all the way up to 3. So at 90 degrees, it takes on the value of 3, and at 270, it goes down to minus 3. So that graph has an amplitude of three units. It deviates by going up three, down three. It stretches up. That A kind of has a, a up-down stretch effect. Now, let's look at Y equals a half sine X. A takes on the value a half, and that would, I'm sure you can see now, my amplitude is going to be a half. So now, at 90 degrees, instead of going to one, it only is going to reach a half and then down to minus half. So it's much smaller. As A gets smaller, so the stretch gets smaller. And once again, don't forget, we always need to fill in this key value. So at 90, goes up to a half. At 270, goes down to minus a half. So we can see very clearly that the effect of A is affects the amplitude, the stretch up and the stretch down. Okay, we have one more example here when A is negative. Mm -hmm. So what happens here? So we have, let's get my dark green here. We have this one here. You can see that A has a value negative 1. Now we know from our other functions, straight line, um, parabola, etc., that if my A is negative, or if the value in front is negative, then the function is reflected around the x-axis. In other words, because that's a negative there. So now, what do you think it's going to do? This is my standard curve up there. But if it's reflected around the x-axis, instead of going up, it's going to go down. 
And then instead of being minus 1 at 270, it's going to be positive 1. So there you have it. So at 90 degrees, it's now going to be minus 1. And at 270, it's going to be positive 1. Interesting. Reflection around the x-axis. You can see that very clearly. Um, now, what's the amplitude going to be? It still deviates off the baseline by 1 unit. So the amplitude is going to be 1. Even though the value of A is negative, the amplitude is a, always a positive value. In this case, it's 1. That's the effect of A. Now we're going to move on to the effect of Q. Now I'm sure that you know what the effect of this is here. Plus Q minus Q. What do you think? Exactly. It's going to be a shift up and a shift down. So if we look at this first example, number 1 here, Y equals sine X plus 1. I've drawn my basic sine curve here. You'll get to recognize it. Now, if it's plus 1, the whole curve just moves up by 1 unit. So, it's going to look something like this. And you can see I'm drawing with kind of like sketching it really than a solid line. And that's fine to get your shape. So, at 90, it's now going to be 2. At 270, it's going to be 0. And at 360, it's going to be 1. And literally, the whole graph has just shifted up 1. And you know that a plus Q there affects a shift either up or down. What do you think our amplitude is going to be? If you can kind of see that this here still has a deviation of up 1 or down 1, the amplitude is still going to be 1. And my what's changed here is my range. Because my range in the initial one was there. Now my range has changed to there. So essentially your range, what's your range going to be? It's going to be between, it's going to be greater or equal to 0 and smaller than or equal to 2. Okay, let's do another one. Aha, here we have plus 2. So my, there's my standard curve. You can see it nicely drawn. Let's use red. So plus 2 means 1, 2. It's going to go there. 1, 2, 1, Two is going to go there. One, two is going to go there. And we can draw my sine curve. Okay, we draw it like, I always draw it like a sketchy. It kind of feels like it's more accurate like that. So what's happened is this whole graph has shifted up. So now this is going to be 90 degrees, three. This is going to be 270, one. And this is going to be 360, two. There you have it. So that plus Q is a whole shift up. Amplitude, amplitude is unchanged, still going to be 1. Range is going to change, it's now between 1 and 3. Another one. Aha, what do you think this is going to do? Minus 3, yes. There's your, sign, your basic standard sine curve. We're going to move it down, 1, 2, 3. So it's going to start there, 1, 2, 3. One, oopsie. Okay, so it's going to be there. It's going to be there. It's going to be there. Let's draw it. Fill in value. So this is going to be 90 degrees minus 2. Uh, 270, you'll notice I'm just doing the turning points, if I can call them that. Student turning points or stationary points. I'm not doing, and I'm also doing the end points. It's important to show the end points as well. There you go. So I've literally moved that down three units everywhere. Amplitude is still one. Range is now from, it's going to go from, or well, from minus two to minus four. Okay, we need to swap that over. equal to minus four, small equal to minus two. Did I do the right one here? Okay, so there you have it. So that's the effect of, where are we? Sorry, right to the beginning. The effect of A, which is an up and down shift, changes the amplitude, and then a Q, which is a shift up and down. Sorry, A was more a stretch. Now, let's quickly, quickly look at these here. What happens if we get an example like this? F of X, which is just another word for labeling of Y, equals 2 sine X minus 1. Now, if you look at this, 
you know that this is a sine curve. Okay, so your basic sine curve goes like that. Two, you've learned now is a stretch. And minus one at the end means the whole thing is just shifted down one. Okay, so my amplitude is going to be picked up from there. So my amplitude will be two. My period is still going to be 360 degrees. And we're going to go and sketch it. Now, sketching it is going to be dead easy because you're just going to go onto your calculator. You're going to plug in fx equals 2 sine x minus 1. And you're going to go from 0 to 360 degrees. And you're going to maybe do a step of 30. I would stick with step of 30. And there you go and do it with your calculator and you'll see I've drawn it for you. Key point is your turning point. Down, turning point, end point, turning point, turning point, x-intercept, end point you have to label. And then, of course, this is the fx graph. There you go. Let's do one more. Okay, this one here. So now we've got gx equals minus cos x plus 1. You can see clearly it's a cos curve. This minus, you know, is a reflection now around the x-axis. And the plus 1 is a shift up. My amplitude, although it's a minus, is still going to be 1. And the period is still going to be 360. We haven't messed with that yet. So now you go into your calculator. You plug in your table function. You sketch your graph. And it's going to look something like this. Because remember, it's a shift up of 1. Just remind you what your standard cos curve looks like. Our standard cos curve is like this. What's happened is it's flipped around and it's shifted up 1. And that's how we get this purple curve here. Okay. So if you can get understanding, that's important because it's un important to understand because when you work backwards from the graphs to find the equations, but in terms of sketching, use your calculator. Okay, that's how we, we sketch this using the table. Cool, that's it for now. There'll be some practice examples for you to go and sketch some graphs, but you are your Casio is your best friend when sketching trig graphs. Thanks, grade 11s. That's part two done and dusted.